Good morning and welcome to this week's Grow where we gather to recharge, organize and work here as members of MWEG. We are happy to officially be starting our Hope Votes series as we head into the election season. If you are not familiar with that, MWEG recently launched um, the Hope Votes as a fall campaign leading up with information um, of how to become a principled citizen, a principled voter, how to, our media literacy will have tips and tools of how to prepare and, and research out uh, candidates and ways to do that. And then we'll have a lot of peacemaking tools that you can use um, and apply in your own relationships. Uh, today, we have Lisa Tingi joining us. She has been working hard on this campaign. She's going to give us just a quick overview and introduce what we mean when we say principled citizen, when we talk about um, our principled citizen initiative or what that what that might be. So I'm going to turn the time over to her to talk about that. This is just going to be a quick, short grow today, and we'll put a few links um, in the chat as well. I would encourage anybody, um, all of you that are on here today and anybody that listens to the recording, that if you are not in MWEG Central, which is our app, you can go to the App Store, just type in MWEG, and the app will pop up. It's just our, our little purple logo. Um, that is going to be essential for finding information about chapter events. And those chapter events will be essential because a lot of things that are happening in your state may not be happening in your neighboring state or uh, nationwide. So it'll be great for having those chapter events. And um, some chapters are working to set up voter preparation parties, which we've talked about and we'll probably talk about again coming up here. Um, but if you want to be take part in a virtual voter prep party in your state, that would be the place to be is on MWAC Central. So uh, Lisa, why don't you go ahead and talk about Principal Citizen and, and I'll go find some links. That's great. Thank you so much, Rachel. Okay. So I'm so excited to talk to you all today. I wanted to kind of give you like a behind the scenes look at how, why we developed this program, how we developed it and what we're hoping will happen with it. So um, we talked previously this summer about the decline of the citizen. That's kind of some language that we're hearing from a lot of, um, you know, pro-democracy groups that as a, as a whole, um, we are not really living up to that standard of what a citizen needs to be to have a healthy democracy. And, you know, people have different ideas about this. Um, if when you think about what your, you know, role is, what it means to be a good citizen, what are some of the first things that come to mind? For most people, that's voting, right? Um, and if that were all that being a good citizen is, we would we would kind of be doing a little bit better right now. You know, um, our rates, our voting rates have actually gone up in the last few years. Um, the first time that midterm votes, voting rates went more than 50%, um, what it, it recently was in 2018. And the time before that was more than a hundred years before that. <laughs> so, you know, we're slowly starting to make our way up. You know, 50% does seem kind of like kind of a low bar. <laughs> um, but there was uh, in 2020, we had 66% voter turnout. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for that. And one is definitely accessibility because of COVID. A lot of states opened up the accessibility for voting with mail-in ballots. It was also the year that we had the most mail-in ballots that were ever utilized. Um, and the last time it was that high, 66% was 1900. So, you know, we are making some strides um, since the 80s, women in particular, since the 80s, women have outpaced men, both in registration and in voter turnout, which is amazing. Um, but, you know, these get out the vote efforts have mainly resided among um, parties and organizations, right? The state, the government uh, doesn't have a whole lot of, um, doesn't have a huge role in that historically and even today. Um, and so that's why MWEG is taking such a big, one of the reasons why MWEG is taking such a big role in this. Um, we see they're predicting that there are seven within battleground states, that there are seven states that they're predicting are gonna see over 80% voter turnout, which is amazing. Um, and it also goes to show that when you have these really 
um, really uh, tight races, how much higher higher voter turnout is because there's more uh, understanding that your vote is going to matter. We can talk about that later. But uh, all that to say that being a good citizen is not just about voting, um, though the majority of the campaign that I'm going to be talking about today still is related. So the October Book Club book that NYG is doing is called The Bill of Obligations, 10 Habits of Good Citizens by Richard Haas. So I encourage you to check that out. But he talks about 10 habits that are important for good citizens to have. So we're going to be informed, get involved, stay open to compromise. Actually, I'm going to copy and put these into the into the chat here so you can take a look at them. Right here. Um, stay open to compromise, remain civil, reject violence, value norms, promote the common good, respect government service, support the teachings of civics and put country first. Okay, so looking over that list, I want you to think about where you learn how to do these things. Okay, and I also want you to think about this old adage that, you know, in polite company, we don't talk about politics. Okay, and so imagining that's that's your baseline, we don't really talk about politics, how easy it, is it to meet some of these other uh, habits of a good citizen? Okay, it's really prohibitive, right? Um, doing some of these things is, are, are where we, speaking about politics with other people, are where we get to get to practice and get better at, at these really important concepts. And, um, you know, one of the main reasons that people don't like to talk politics is because they have kind of a really skewed definition of what politics is. So a lot of people think politics, presidential campaigns, you know, and that's like really immediate, immediately where their mind goes. Um, but I really like the definition that politics is how people treat people. Okay. And so that can be on a very, very local level. Um, in fact, just last night, we had our, our neighborhood had our annual HOA meeting. Okay. So it, it was just great to see some of this stuff play out, you know, in real time, as I was thinking about this today, uh, because two things were brought up. Okay. So someone brought up that there was like a stormwater issue and it had caused this massive four foot by four foot hole right next to the sidewalk where kids play and, you know, people are walking their dogs. You know, it's a per fairly highly trafficked area. And they said they called the city and it's going to cost initial estimates for over, you know, over half a million dollars. And um, so what they said is, I, we really could use your support. You know, if we could get a petition from everyone in our neighborhood to say, this is really important. This is going to, you know, help um, prevent people from getting harmed or, or things like that, then, then, then the city will start to listen. Okay. And so as you can imagine, everyone was like, Oh, great. You know, one person, even before she heard the price tag, she even asked how much it might cost. Cause she's like, maybe I can chip in on this. And um, so you really saw immediately how open people were to reaching out and helping and solving these problems the way they need to be solved. And then the second issue that was brought up kind of, approach it from a different angle. They, they were talking about speed bumps. You know, people are going so fast in the in, in the neighborhood, but there's kind of some disagreement. Raise your hand if you if you support speed bumps in the neighborhood and people raise their hand. And then they say, raise your hand if you don't support speed bumps. And three people raise their hand. And um and they're like there's you know a little a little bit of discussion. But then afterward getting to hear from those, you know, brave few who said, I, you know, I disagree with everyone else in my neighborhood. It was, we had the opportunity to hear the reasons, you know, and it would be easy to say, they don't care about children, you know, <laughs> but some of the reasons that were brought up is um, these are really steep hills. And in the winter time, if we add one more barrier, we may not be able to make it up that hill, you know, so-and-so and all these people shared times where they almost didn't make it up the hill and maybe that would be a barrier or we have lots of kids in the neighborhood and they're riding their bikes and is this going to be another you know something that keeps them from wanting to do that so anyway there was just discussion that was on a very personal one-on-one -on -one, um, level that just helped people to understand uh, 
that politics is 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 what really affects you and me every day, right? Um, so so we want to help we want to help you have these peaceable, nice conversations that are impactful. These things really do matter to the neighborhood, um, but in ways that um, that allow you to bring other people in, right? So if you're here attending a GROW meeting for MWEG, um, chances are you're pretty highly like involved. <laughs> chances are you know what's going on, you know what races are happening, you are pretty plugged in politically, okay? Um, so the idea around principled voter is we wanna help you um, figure out how you're, help you find the language surrounding why you're voting for different things and then bringing other people in, people who maybe um, historically have felt like they did not belong. Okay, so the first half um, is what we call our principled voting program. And we just in, uh, introduced the very first slide of it on Instagram on Tuesday. And it talks about, um, we, just some really important questions that you want to keep in mind, right? You want to you want to be thinking outside of yourself, okay? You don't want to just be thinking about how policies are affecting you. You want to be, um, my mind is blinking now. <laughs> you, you oh, you want to you want to think about what po what policies and what issues desperately need to be fixed right now, and then you also want to be thinking about these shared national principles and values that we have, and what candidates and what ballot measures are really gonna support those so that we can have this, this healthy, strong democracy that we all want, okay? And so as part of this, as we've been developing the, the kind of curriculum for it, we um, have made use of our MWEG, our MWEG members. And we started a group called the Cross-Party, part, uh, Cross-Partisan Feedback Group, okay? So we have um, an equal number of people who consider themselves conservative and are registered Republicans, people who consider themselves liberal and are um, registered Democrats. And then we also have an equal number of people who uh, kind of feel somewhere in between and are, are not affiliated with any party. And so we've been sending them surveys and we're gonna continue to do this throughout the election season to get really strong feedback on, on principles that are, um, relatable and valued by, by people regardless of what your your uh, political ideology is. And that's a really critical component of this to help us um, to, so that you can feel comfortable sharing these materials with someone who fits really anywhere along the space. Um, the second part, so so be looking out, We just, like I said, we just did our first intro. Uh, we have another one coming out tomorrow that's all focused on character and why character matters. Um, and then we also, like I said, we'll have some all about these shared national values that we have. Um, but then what you know, once you have focused in, decided how you're voting, um, that that's very important. And your one vote does really matter. But if you want to make that one vote go farther, if you want to make that one vote matter even more, if you want to have a bigger impact in this election, that is why we also have this second part. Okay, so this is this includes our voter preparation parties. It includes these deep canvassing mini toolkits to help you know how to have conversations about issues like immigration and democracy and things that you're hearing people talk about, but maybe you don't have the language to uh, discuss it in a way that's gonna be productive uh, rather than um, confrontational. And so we also have another, um, we also sent a survey out about this to find out more information about our friends who might be low turnout voters. You know, our friends who maybe they're going to vote, maybe they won't, uh, maybe they're on the fence, and so they feel like it doesn't really matter if they end up going in to vote or not. Um, we got a, a really good feel for who these people are, and we're hearing that they are super busy, right? They're feeling overwhelmed, not just um, from what's going, I mean, yes, from what's going on in their daily lives, <laughs> but also uh, what's going on politically. So it seems just so much easier to withdraw. And historically, traditionally what happens with people in that group, if they do decide to vote, they're gonna outsource their vote, right? They're gonna, they're gonna look to a political party that they've been a part of, or they're gonna you know, ask 
a spouse or ask a friend or whatever, and they're not going to put a lot of thought into it. Um, so because they just don't have the bandwidth, right? So we wanted to make these voter prep parties super fun, <laughs> very fun, very appealing, kind of to buck that um, stereotype that politics are ugly and divisive and show that they can be something that we can unite around even if we don't believe the same way. So we talked a little bit about with this with this survey group, you know, who has traditions surrounding holidays that they love, right? Everyone's got their, you know, Thanksgiving traditions, Christmas traditions, New Year's, all the, you know, Halloween is coming up, right? You have traditions that that you have surrounding these holidays and with elections, we don't really have that. You know, you might you might have a tradition of watching the debates. Um or having friends come over to watch the debates that could, that's that's a fun social thing but beyond that there's not it, it has felt like a very personal thing um and so we kind of want to change that and make it feel like something to celebrate because it is you know to celebrate our democracy get get people together um help them to see that these topics don't have to be taboo they shouldn't be taboo and the less that they are the closer we will get to having an environment where we can effectively talk with people and move kind of closer together. So, um, so that's the next thing that you're going to want to be looking out for is we have these voter prep parties. Some of you may uh, have engaged, you know, done them in the past, and we had really great materials before, and now we're really just upping that level. <laughs> we have some really just really fun games that are not just fun and silly, but 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 instructive too and so you can feel great about inviting these people in your life who maybe you've never talked about politics um maybe you don't know you know how they feel about these things but you can feel confident in inviting them because you know you're going to have a good time together and you're going to learn something from each other so that's our hope um for this principled citizen campaign um you're definitely going to be hearing more about it um and as rachel said there are quite a few chapters that are getting together to do to, to discuss this specific topic uh, next next Tuesday. I know the Eastern States region. So if you live anywhere in the Eastern States, we're having a uh, chapter meeting about this and it's going to be much more discussion oriented, really fun. Um, October 3rd is the Central States um, meeting that we're going to be meeting together. And then I know we have some happening you know, in Nevada, California, um, Arizona, Utah, Idaho, I mean, all over the place. So definitely be looking out for those meetings. Um, you can find them for sure in your chapter space on Central, like Rachel mentioned. So please go log in to Central where you can get some of that information and make sure that you're following along with us. And when you see some kind of, if you're on social media and you do see one of these posts that really relates to you, that, you know, share it, share it with a friend, share it on your, on your, in your story, share it through a DM, because those little tiny acts make a difference. And it really does increase the, the reach of your personal vote. So if you have any feedback or uh, want to get involved with any of these things, you can definitely reach out to me also on Central. Um, and, you know, we're always looking for, looking for people to help out. So thank you so much. It was great to be here with you. Thank you, Lisa. I'm just wondering if anybody has any questions. I didn't see anything in the chat, but if anybody has questions about the voter prep parties or your chapter, um, we also wanted to let people know that MWAG has been given uh, a grant so we can offer some stipends. So if you would like to host a voter prep party in your area, there's a link where you can go and register. It'll ask some questions, but it'll help cover like your refreshments. And, and that kind of thing. So we would love to help you host that. So if you have interest, please reach out to us. Again, all of that information can be found through the MWAG app. So we just, we wanna encourage that because all of our information is there. It's, there's a wealth of resources that are easier to find than on our website, I would say. And so um, that would be the place to go. And you can always reach out and ask questions. We want to thank you for joining us for this week's Crow. Next week, we're going to be 
um, talking more about Hope Votes and how you can be involved if you are interested in being a poll worker. We have some links for that and we'll share those in next week's Grow or you can go to Central. We're also gonna talk about being a poll chaplain. And that sounds a little bit interesting because chaplain's not a word we typically use um, in our faith, dial in the dialogue we use, but um, it's an interfaith uh, project that we're partnered with. So if you would, might be interested, it's just being a kind person and a kind face in a community of people who may have to wait in line to vote. So it, it comes with some other things. We're going to discuss that next week on The Grow. So we hope you guys will join us. Until then, thanks for being with us. Bye.